Lantern's Aura presents Aslintha Episode 4 The Great Expedition I don't want to die today. <laughs> You're not going to die today. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. That's not as reassuring as you think. Anyways, I am heading home. What? Why? Our boss is dead. We can't get paid if he's dead. You're just going to leave like that? Yep. You do realize if Corgon gets out, you might not have a home to go back to, right? Then I'll go someplace else. I signed up to do a job and get paid for doing it, not fight a god for free. But if Corgon gets out, do you really think he'll stop at this city? Everyone will be in danger, not just here. Then I keep moving. This isn't my fight, and it definitely ain't yours, outsider. So that's it? You're just going to leave everyone to die? I thought you were the good guy. Really? You've known me for what? A day? And suddenly you think you know everything about me? You're too trusting. There's one thing you should know about me, kid. I am not a good person. Now get out of my way. So you're just gonna let innocent people die because you're a coward. Damn it. So what's our next move? Well, obviously Corgon has people out here also looking for the keys. Or at least trying to stop people like us from finding them. Which means as far as I'm concerned, we have no allies. Okay, and the good news? What? I've heard the stories. There's always some good news. Kid, this isn't one of those stories you hear bards telling to adoring audiences and children. This is real life. We have no allies, no funding, no intel outside of what that useless priest told us before sending us on this suicide mission. At this point, we need to just focus on not dying. Sorry to burst your bubble, but that's not going to work out too well. We have the attention of a literal evil god. We need to focus on completing the mission before he figures out a way out of that tower and kills us. If we want him in the tower as long as possible, then why are we looking for keys to open it? That's just asking for him to be freed. I mean, he was supposedly locked in there with that other guy. Orion, wasn't it? Maybe the plan was to free him so he could kill Corgon for us? Exactly. So let's just focus on finding the keys for now. Mm. Right. Because we know he's still alive in there. And while we're at it, Let's get that dragon from the mountains to fight alongside us. And that vampire lord in the south who used to work for Corgon can join us for tea as well. You both need to wake up. There is no happy ending here. Let's just go our separate ways. Hope they don't figure out one of us has that first key. 
If you really believe that, then why'd you follow us here all the way from the temple? I don't know, because maybe, just maybe, I thought for a second we had a chance. But think about it. We can't do anything. You hadn't even been in a fight until yesterday, and the elf here can't even stay awake long enough to even fight a single skeleton, let alone whatever followers Korgon has. Would you both shut up for a second? I actually thought of a plan. You what? Look, I might not be a great warrior, but I do have a brain. Something you two seem to be lacking. I have a brain? You sure about that? I think that time in the desert turned it to dust. Enough! You say you have a plan, then out with it. We know where at least one of the other groups was sent. That pyramid in the desert. If we go there and any of them are still alive, they might have more information. And know where we can find more allies. Plus, the pyramid is supposed to have been made by the same guy that made the tower. So maybe we can learn something from it while we're there. The pyramid, right. My dad's still there. He can help us. Plus, I grew up in the desert, so I can guide us to the pyramid. And I know where to get some supplies along the way. So what are we waiting for? <sighs> Fine. If this doesn't work, though, I'm out. And if I catch even a whiff of Korgon's followers, you're on your own. So how far is it to the desert gate? Not much further, just a couple of buildings down around the corner. I shouldn't have agreed to this. I'm gonna be pouring sand out of my armor for weeks. Oh gods, I didn't even think of the sand. Are you sure the pyramid is in the desert? Maybe it's in the forest district I've heard so much about. Relax, at this point, sand is the least of our worries. Here we are, at the desert gate. What, you've never seen one of the gates before? No, are they all that big? Yep, every single one is made out of some sort of material from inside its region except for the docks. No gate there for some reason. We don't have to walk through the sand, do we? How else would you get inside? I hate it here already. Come on, this was your plan, genius. Come on, don't make me drag you in. <sighs> like you could. Travelers, what is your- Oh, hey, Rowan. John, hey. I was expecting to see you back with company. So what gives? Oh, we're heading to the pyramid for city business. I'm sorry, what? City business? I never took you for the time to work for the government, my friend. Yeah, well, today's sort of been full of surprises. Right, right. So I'm assuming you have the paperwork to go ahead then? Paperwork? I'm afraid our employer is... Very forgetful, and didn't give us the documentation before sending us. Oh, uh, well, sorry, boys, but I can't let you in given the current state of things. You understand, of course. Oh, that's bullshit, and you know it. Sorry, but rules are rules. I can't make an exception just because you want to go after your father again. I mean, you almost got me fired last time. But this time I'm actually doing it for the Knights of Orion. <laughs> right. I'm Borvik. Can you please just let us in? Well, without the necessary paperwork, you're out of luck. God damn it, John. Here. Well, it uh, looks like all your documentation's in order. Uh, welcome to the desert. Make sure you travel by night to avoid the sun, stay safe, and most importantly, don't die. Most more paperwork. I didn't take you as the type to bribe a guard. Let's just go. We can wait at my place till the sun sets.
this is your place? Yeah, nice, isn't it? Raised bed, foot room, curtains to keep out the wind. Took me and my dad a while to afford it, but I think it's nice. I think you got ripped off. What do you mean? You're joking. It's only one room. It's a hut. The bed is so thin you can pretty much see through it. It gets hot. The walls are crumbling apart. Don't pick at the walls. And where are we supposed to sit? There are chairs. That are not made of sand. There's no way I'm resting in a place like this. I'm afraid to even touch anything. It's like a sand castle. It's much stronger than a sand castle. There are storms in the desert. Got anything to drink? Oh yeah, uh... Here. Ugh, this is water? Well, it's flavored water, yes. You need to keep hydrating in the desert. Where's the nearest tavern? It's, uh, the Great Expedition. It's not too far from here. Good, lead the way. What? But we just got here. I I haven't been home in a while. Well, your home sucks. Take us to a place where I can't see the air. The tavern is still in the desert. There's still going to be sand. You realize that, right? This is the worst district. How could you know that? You've only been to two districts. There is nothing worse than literally everything, including the air, making you dirty. If you two are going to keep arguing, can we at least do it where I have a drink in my hand? Fine. I don't have enough food to feed the three of us anyway. And the Great Expedition is one of the best taverns in the city. Come on, it looks like the wind's picking up. This place seems... dusty. Well, what do you expect? It's a tavern in the middle of an actual desert. Come on, let's get a seat. I'd rather not. Relax, sitting in the chairs won't kill you. Come on. What? Let go of my hand. I hate you. Relax, would you? This place is great. Ah, oh, Zayla! Rowan, you're back! And I see you brought friends! Hello everyone, my name is Zayla. I take it you're here to rest before you go into the pyramid with this idiot? How did what? you- What? Why would you think that? Oh, sorry. John told me after his shift ended. God damn it, John. I thought you told him to keep quiet. I did! I didn't know he would tell Zayla about it. Actually, he might have told the boss as well. Great. Just great. And Borovic. And everyone that would listen to his drunk rants. I'm gonna kill him. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm going to kill him. Right. Well, before you try to beat him to death with one of your books, can I give it you a drink? You know, your usual? Yes, and the same for my friends. They'll want to be able to understand Borovic when he starts. Got it. I'll be right back. Zayla's been working here since we were kids. Our dads were part of the same group of archaeologists growing up, so we spent a lot of our time here as kids. Wait, is she your girlfriend? What? <laughs> no, it's not like that. There you go, it's on the house this time. Borvik said he wants to talk to you after his show, and the boss wants to talk to you before you head to the pyramid. Something about Ezekiel. Oh, gods. Not Ezekiel. Yeah, have fun with that. I just realized, you never told me the name of your friends. Actually, we're not friends. Oh, Ryan. Ryan never told me you had a boyfriend. What? what? No, 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 no. We just work together. That's it. Oh, 
so he's single. Relax, I'm just messing with you. Let me know if you need anything. I can get you food, drinks, embarrassing stories about Rowan as a kid. Oh, Dorvik needs help getting on stage. I'll be back later. She seems nice. So, not to seem rude, but what the vittle is in this drink? Who cares? Oh, it's Bama's specialty. What exactly is in it? Water, mead, cactus seasoning, and a little bit of enchanted scorpion venom. What? It's enchanted to remove the poison from it. It helps to improve the flavor, but also make the show understandable. The show? You'll see. Quiet down, everyone! Quiet down! I know you're all anxious to hear tonight's tale. So without further ado, I give you over to Borovic. He doesn't look so good. Hey, he may not look it, but he's one of the best storytellers in the city. I'm sure he'll still be around here long after either of us are. He's just talking in gibberish. You've got to drink that, or else you'll never understand him. I think I'm gonna pass. Fine, I'll take it then. No point letting it go to waste. Rowan! It's always good to see you, and I see you brought company. Aunt Bamel, this is Tick and Turgeon. Hello. This is a great place you've got here. Oh, thank you for those kind words. I trust Rowan hasn't been getting you two into too much trouble. I know he has a habit of not using his head. <laughs> Baymol. I mean, he did get stabbed yesterday. And also let you get knocked out twice. Did not. No, you totally got knocked out twice. It sounds like you've had quite the adventure. I'm sure Borovic and Ezekiel will want to hear all about it when you talk to him. Uh, not Ezekiel. Oh, I, uh, told him you would stop by while you were in town for some supplies. It was the only way I could get him to stop trying to sell his artifacts in my bar. Ugh. I'll catch up with you after you get out of the pyramid. Try not to die. I doubt the pyramid will kill me. I meant in Ezekiel's shop. I trust your friends to keep you from doing anything too stupid in the pyramid. I thought Zayla was exaggerating. God damn it, John! <laughs> she seems nice. So you bribed that guy at the gate, and he did what you paid him not to do anyways. Yeah, yeah, I know. Look, just relax. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go talk to Borovic. Then we can go see what Ezekiel wants. Vic, an excellent show tonight. Ah, Rowan. We both know I didn't ask you here for a critique on the show. I don't know what you're talking about. I know you started adventuring. I want to know everything. What? Adventuring? No, it's just archaeology. Right, and I don't need help getting onto the stage every night. Look, it's just... it's complicated. That's what your father said before he went to the pyramid. Look. You don't have to tell me everything. Just please, tell me what happens when it's over. I just need some new stories to tell, and I have a feeling that yours is going to be great. I guess I'd best be off then. Oh no. Zayla, what did you tell them? I didn't tell them anything. <laughs>
Relax. She didn't tell us anything. Did you finish your business with the bard? Yeah, we can go. I see you've received my invitation. Welcome to Ezekiel's Magical Artifacts and Supplies! Yes, yes, I'm here. So what did you need to talk to me about? Ah, uh, yes. A little bird told me you were going to the Pyramid! God damn it, John. Relax. I agree with your idea of saving those archaeologists. It doesn't help business if my customers go and die a horrible death. Which is why I, Ezekiel the Great, am offering you a 5% discount on all of my wares. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. But I think we're set. Hold on. We need supplies. If the pyramid is as far as Baymall said, we won't make it without a restock. And a discount is good. Yeah, what's the harm in checking for supplies? I thought you wouldn't want supplies from a sand-covered shop like this. We're in a desert. There's sand everywhere. Fine. Excellent, excellent! Now, tell me, my friends, what is it you desire? Name it, and I shall find it. Well, we need a tent to protect us from the sun. Ah, yes! I have just the item for you! Here we go! Ezekiel's Invincible Tent! You've gotta be joking. That's just a tarp and a stick. It doesn't even have anything to hold it down. Have you got anything besides that blanket? Ah, you desire something of higher caliber than the average traveler? Have no fear. I will find an item that meets your standards. So says I, Ezekiel the Great! Uh, see, oh, no, not that. Oh, no, 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 we got the good stuff now. Here we are. Feast your eyes, my friends, on Ezekiel's more invincible tent. Ah. Uh. This tent will protect you from any sandstorm or desert heat. Some restrictions apply. Doesn't work on magical sandstorms or monsters. If you experience side effects such as death, please see your local healer. That's just the same tent with a second stick. Can we just go? Yes, please. Wait, how much? Ah, man of taste. For you, my friend, after your discount, it's only 500 gold. 500? I'm gonna have to pass on that. Wait, my friends! Okay, I see you are people of wealth and importance. So here, let me find something else for you before you go. <laughs> I guess we have to do something good now. All right, fine, here you go. <sighs> All right, then. This is the greatest tent ever made. It is made from the leaves of the ancient tree in the great forest laced with giant's blood and enchanted by the Knights of Orion. It can't be cut, blown away, or otherwise affected by those that didn't pitch it. It can be yours, my friend, for 10,000 gold. Right. No thanks. Let's make a deal. The second tent for 20 gold. Uh, 400. 50. 350. 50, the contents I have in this pouch, and this enchanted spear. Oh. What could be in the side? Hmm. And the spear and... Deal! Sand? Sand? <laughs> well played, well played indeed, my friend! Pleasure doing business with you. Uh, good luck out there. 
And thank you for shopping at Ezekiel's Magical Artifacts and Supplies! I can't believe everywhere is just as dusty as here. It's a desert. If someone says it's a desert one more time. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you were so delicate. Although, I should have guessed since you haven't made it through a single fight yet. Will you two drop that already? No. Absolutely not. Fine. So we wait here until the sun goes down? Yeah, well, it's not a great idea to go very far during the day in a desert. It'll be cooler at night. You two get some rest. I'm okay with staying up. I'll wake you when the sun goes down. Oh, thank you. Um, well, this is my bed, but, uh, Tick, you can use that one. It's been washed. It's not going to bite. If you want, you can sleep on the floor. I mean, you already do anyway. Fine, fine. I'll rest on the sand-filled bed, but if I get a rash, I'm blaming you. Stop bickering. You two are worse than children. I resent No, we're that. not. Sleep now. down why is it still so hot welcome to the desert you know if you took that cloak off you probably wouldn't feel so hot hey wait before you go you need to pay the search party tax you've got to be kidding me search party tax or if you don't come back so we can pay a group to recover your bodies that's ridiculous what if we don't die then we use the money to pay for groups that aren't so fortunate. Fine, here, take this. Pleasure doing business with you. Have fun in the pyramid. God damn it, John. Relax. If this is the worst thing that happens, then we'll have your father back in no time. Right. Hang on, Dad. I'm coming. Eslintha is a podcast created by Lantern Zora. Today's episode was written by Karma and Sean McGarry and performed by Sean McGarry, Carter Lyons, Karma, Matthew Laycock, Katie Nicolau, what names? Al Kahi and Robert Bildo. It was directed by Sean McGarry and edited by Karma. That's when the theme song was written by Andrew Bianchi. To comment on episodes, make donations, view merchandise and social links, visit lanternzora.com. Find us on Facebook and Instagram at lanternzora. To contact us, email us at lanternsaura at gmail.com. Episode 5 will be airing Friday, October 1st at 8pm Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for listening.